Welcome back to Moonstar, a Sailor Moon podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Alex Summers, and this week we'll be covering the 17th episode of the original English dub of Sailor Moon titled An Animated Mess. That was a tongue twister, kind of. Uh, this episode is 21 in Japanese and direct translations and is called Protect the Children's Dreams, Friendship Through Anime. Just two quick notes up top before we get started. Bookmark the following two websites, VintageAnimeVideo.com and MoonstarPod.com. More about those in the outro. Uh, Now let's just get into the episode. Peace! How was your week? Oh, this past week it was fine. I was the only interesting stuff that happened was uh, just all of this past weekend. I was um, in the city again uh, for at the main gay bar just for drag shows. Oh, who did you see? Do you remember any of the names? Yeah, well, the, there's always one that's on Saturday night um, that isn't themed. Like it's, it happens twice a week there, and then last night was. Uh, a comp like it's a it's a competition between uh teams of two people that are going on for three more weeks oh that sounds kind of fun actually i need to go out and see some local drag it's been a minute i think the last time i went was a new year's eve show and i can't remember it would have been the last one before covid hit which then shut down the place where I went for the shows all the time, which was the Parliament House in Orlando. It's like a really, really well-known gay bar that a lot of drag queens frequented. Um, and then, yeah, COVID took it out, unfortunately. Uh, oh. Yeah, it did that to a lot of places here. I'm glad you still have your local stuff going on up there. Yeah. Um, what about your interviews this week? Who did you have? Did you do any? No, but I haven't done any since the last time that we talked. So you actually had a week off. I think that's the first time you've had a week off since we've started, that I know of, anyway, (laughs) since we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, And just because I was updating the website this week and rebranding some stuff, and I put a section about you, and we discovered you have how many interviews and counting? How many is it? Uh, 286 right now. Yeah, geez. Um, And remind everybody when you started again. Uh, it was July of 2020. It's really, really impressive. Thanks. And um, some of the people you're starting to get are really like it. They're legitimate actors, and don't, when I not that voice actors aren't, but what I mean is like in in terms of the mainstream, a random person walking down the street is more likely to know some of these people. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I think you're going to start to see. I don't know, what do you call it? Like, you plant seeds and they will grow. Like, these are your seeds. You're going to see some cool stuff from this later on. Um, Well, for me, I've just kind of been updating, you know, the website. I added some new stuff, working on the card expansions with Daniel a little bit. Planning a show for the summer that's going to start, which I want you to be a part of if you have time. I'm not going to make you co-host that entire one, but I want you to have a segment on it about card captors. Because you know card captors. Um, yeah. and I found someone, his name's Matthew. He's like, kind of like me, but about card captors, I would say even on a higher level. So he's like the expert expert on it. Okay. Um, and he has, you know, like all the merch and everything, um, which is kind of what I'm getting into with the website now yeah. where I think there's, there's room for these type of shows in a more like serious way, which is uh, even though we have a lot of fun on this one, I treat this show with as much respect as I can. Yeah. You know? Um, and for me, it's about, I really want this to be an evergreen podcast as much as possible where like 50 years from now. And when this show has been like forgotten about someone's going to, you know how like um, cult culture works where it's like some random fringe teenager who at the time being fringe probably means like, I don't know, purposefully breathing bad air or whatever. I don't know. Um, But they're going to like find the show and be like, what is this thing about? You know? And then it's all right there. And it's not, we're not making fun of it. We're not saying, Oh, look how terrible all these changes were. It's kind of like, 
we explain why they happened and, and all that. And I think there's a lot of specific animes that were brought to North America in like the 80s, 90s, and early aughts that kind of fit that mold where like the first or maybe even sometimes the only version we got over here was like super edited and changed from the original, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't think that means like those versions are bad. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of intentional cool things that they added to them, especially in Sailor Moon's case. And with something like Card Captors, which I'll, we'll, we've talked a little bit about, but they really, like, if we are being true to the, like, landscape, the social landscape of the 90s when Card Captors was translated, I don't really know how they would have done an actual translation and explained all of the complicated different types of romances that are in that show. And also had it, like, on the the kids tv time spot where they wanted it you know yeah i wouldn't have been able to work i don't think you could do it today honestly even like because i don't really know that we've gotten to the point where because isn't it like isn't there incestuous relationships in that show uh i don't think there's that it's just a lot of uh like underage stuff that's what it was i knew it was it was one of the one of those things where it's just very like even in by today's standards, it's it, it's tough if you're not looking at it through the correct lens, yeah. which is what we're going to try to do, you know, with that show in the summer. Because um, I do still think Card Captors and Card Captor Sakura both are great animes and, and really, really important in terms of especially the magical girl genre. Yeah. What's your experience with Card Captors? I know we've talked a little about it already. Uh, I didn't really look into it a whole lot until I was older and just watched the Japanese original version. Um, I've seen all of the original series and both of the movies. Haven't seen that much of the clear card stuff. Um, yeah, I like it. I mean, it's classic. It's, uh, it's really well animated and, um, a really pretty clamp show from that, from that team. And it's another kind of ahead of its time, in, or in it's it, it's an instance where it's another gay relationship uh between Yukito Yuki, yeah but Yukito and Toya that was ahead of its time for at least when it would have came out here even though that wasn't the, it, like it was censored in the first version but yeah like another another case of that I'm curious I'm sure eventually they'll redub the original season cuz I know that they dubbed like the stuff that came after it kind of later in a more I think anyway in a more like true to the anime style um it would be interesting to see them redo season one but I am kind of like it's again I really love a lot of the voices they had the voice actors were great for that and the original music they made was really good for and it was done by Nelvana yeah um for people who want to look it up but also sometimes when I look at shows like that the amount of that stuff, and we've talked about this before, that they have in anime, I it just makes me think that we are interpreting it way too seriously. Do you know mm. what I mean? I cannot imagine that like all of Japan is like looking at it through the lens that a lot of Americans would look through it and just be like, "Yeah, that's chill." You know, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. they this, these are kid shows to them too. Kind of are they more adolescent? What what age group would you say? For both for both SM and CCS, for anime, I guess of that nature in general. Yeah, I mean, it's I think to fully understand everything that's going on, probably the youngest I would say would be like seventh or eighth grade, but like younger than that even too, I guess would be the demographic. But to like, I think yeah, in order to understand what's going on, then you'd have to like fully to at least be you know 13 or 14 maybe yeah and i think like what we see in sailor moon the thing with molly and and Nephly, and then the thing the only one i remember knowing about anyway from card captors was is it like i don't know his japanese right, name but lee the boy counterpart to sakura mm-hmm. he has like a crush on her older brother or something right it's i mean that that's that's what people are made to think but it's not actually like it's spoilery but later on it's revealed like why he's reacting that i remember what you're talking about now okay yeah and they actually explain it in a way that is not hasn't doesn't actually have anything to do with with sexuality typical yeah yeah. 
okay see but then that's another case where like the more you like the closer you look at it the more you're like oh that's actually not that creepy right it kind of makes a lot of sense and then also let's say they didn't explain it the way they do don't you remember growing up and your friend like maybe had a hot brother or if you're into girls like a hot older sister and you're just kind of like oh they're attractive and then they make you feel weird like i Mm -hmm. think that's a thing that happens to people yeah you know i don't think that's like some weird oh i don't know um so yeah i'm excited to get into that and i already they they in the english nelvana they had something called kiro's corner so of course we're gonna do chris's corner (laughs) because (laughs) because it just makes sense yeah with with your name um but i thought that that's something that's kind of exciting and then actually i wanted to ask you i'm it depends on i guess what you say but do you have an anime that's your like other than obviously sailor moon or card captors do you have something that you're like, I know absolutely everything about this. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite. Like, I'm obsessed. Do you have one? Yeah, I think I would have more than more than one, for sure. Top three. Can you give me a top three? Uh, Kenshin, Nightwalker, and I guess the original Fruits Basket. Yeah. Okay. Because whenever you would want to you're free to like develop a show based on that and i'll help you and like you know what i mean um, i'm happy to be your soundboard you would have you would take my role kind of do you know what i mean though oh yeah <laughs> so you would have to like watch every episode and and, and take notes and, and you're like teaching whoever the other person is about it um as much as you can right uh but that would be something i think if you ever are up for it i would love to help you do that i'd love to Okay. to be part of that because it's also for me this way like i haven't seen card captors the way i've seen sailor moon so it's going to be a really fun way for me to experience something new you know what i mean yeah so i would love to do that with other animes yeah um and this also this goes out to anyone who's listening if you are i don't know how, like if you have a special interest that is an spe- a specific show that you feel like you would consider yourself at the very least moderately an expert in to where you feel like you could carry a show like this i want to know um you have to be 18 or older but go to our website the new one is vintageanimevideo.com and there's ways to contact us there and yeah you might be doing a show just like this like next year or sooner who knows Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah make sure you sell it to me because if if you're just like if it i don't know I'll, i'll be able to see who I think will stick it out and who won't. So mm-hmm. anyway, uh, that's all exciting stuff on, on my side. It's been a bigger work week for me. You finally had a break. I'm sure next week it's going to flip or something. Do you have plans for a new, for your next person? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's something that's been talked about for a while now. It's supposed to happen by the end of this month. So that's only like 10 more days. So oh, that's it interesting. Should, yeah. Oh, you'll enjoy this too. I was um, teaching this last week and one of my students who is obsessed with Genshin Impact brought it up again. And before I even thought about it, I was just like, oh, I have a friend who interviews voice actors from that. And it was like, you would have thought I told them that I was Madonna. Do you know (laughs) what I mean? I like, it was so funny. The look on their face, it was like joy exploding out of someone's face like I've never seen. And they... (laughs) And they were, of course, like, who is it? And I'm like, I'm not going to tell you this person's name. But, like, I'm just (laughs) saying. Uh, So that was kind of cool because it made, I got to feel like, you know, a little bit of that at work, which was nice. (laughs) Um, Yeah. But also Genshin Impact is, like, super popular, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy. I hear about it a lot. Yeah. When are you going to figure out how to make a Sailor Mercury appear out of thin air for us? Is what I want to know. Oh, Liza. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can, I can bug her, I guess. Uh, I'm, I'm mostly teasing you, uh, but I actually want to know, like, at some point I want to see if we can start pushing for stuff like that in a way that you don't have to do it yourself necessarily, because I know you're busy. I'd totally be down for, like, people from the original cast that I haven't been able to talk to at all yet. It would be really nice to at least also give them each, whoever hasn't necessarily had a chance yet, an opportunity to have like 
whatever they want said about that experience said and, and stuck in a show like this where it's like right next to it. I don't know. I feel like that yeah. would be nice for them because that'll be there forever, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. And then before we get into the sorry, I, 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 <laughs> I almost sent you a picture of this, but then I was like, save it for the show. Um, I was looking, you know, through the Sailor Moon Facebook chats or whatever, and um, someone posted where Linda Ballantyne was going to be this weekend. Oh, the next con? Yeah. yeah. And, like, ever since I heard your interview, I've become, like, fiercely protective over her. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know what happened, but, like, I heard her tell those stories and I related to her so much that, like, anytime anybody even, like, starts to slightly say, oh, she sounded a little, I'm like, well, she was older. <laughs> you know what I'm like like I'm turning into that person not in a mean way but um yeah I was looking right. through all these comments and you know how people can be about her and then I get all the way to the bottom and it was some little lesbian that was just like she's hot and I was like that's her <laughs> favorite reaction <laughs> to everything on this whole thing because there was all these like well thought out debates about voice quality and all that stuff and then it just that that's all that person had to add and I was like sometimes that's all we need to add you know yeah, that does make me. That does that does remind me too. Um, I'll probably go in a, a month from now. I think it's like March twenty fifth or something. Mm-hmm. Emily Emily Claire Barlow, who is the, uh, I interviewed her. She's the voice of uh, Ray just for season two, and then uh, Minako in seasons three and four. Um, she's on tour right now, and she's for her singing career and she's coming to Minneapolis in a month. So I'll probably go. Okay. Do you see, I haven't mentioned it before. How are they all their character? Oh, of course, <laughs> I know. the girl who played Minako <laughs> is a singer now. Like, hello. Of course, the girl who played Amy is like debilitatingly scared of flying on planes. Of course, <laughs> Linda Ballantyne would tell that girl, don't worry, we're the Sailor Scouts, we can save this plane. Of course, the girl who played Sailor Jupiter is always in her garden. It's so perfect. I love them so I know. much. Um, <laughs> such a great... They were like... And that all happened by accident. I know. Which is how life kind of works, I guess. So, there you go. Okay, I guess we should get into the episode. Are you ready? Yep. Today on Sailor Moon, the evil power of the Negaforce filters into an animation studio. Jealousy, ambition, insecurity tear old friends apart and provide rich energy for the evil servants of the Negaforce. Can they be stopped? I'll show you. I say I guess. This is like my favorite episode. For, and also my like experience trying to watch it what fits with the title, which in English was an animated mess. What did they call, <laughs> what did they call it in Japanese? Uh, something, it's like, I'll get the exact thing. Mm-hmm. Protect the children's dreams, friendship through anime. That's cute. Um, it's a very Sailor Moon title. Yeah. <clears> that kind of has a certain cadence to it. Um my issue with it that i laughed so hard at was like i went to pull out the tape to watch it this week and it happens to be on one of two that are like slightly rare from season one and i pull it out it's the last one i have and it there's no like magnetic tape in it it's just an empty box and i'm like like they're the actual plastic do you know what i mean like the plastic part of the the vhs tape is there but the like the magnetic strip inside that contains the show was removed and oh, I was looking weird. at it like, what in the, <laughs> like, yeah. how did that happen? And then someone sold it and was like, I see no issue here. Um, fortunately, I know I didn't pay much for it, but still. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was like, what a choice. Uh, but then I have it on DVD. <laughs> so I watched okay. it there, which it's the DVD, if anyone wants to know, it's called The Man in the Tuxedo Mask. And the VHS is called Red Hearts and Silver Crystals. And they both have... A pink heart theme background with Neflite, Tuxedo Mask, and Sailor Moon on the front. But I thought that was fitting for this episode that I opened the tape and it was just not there. (laughs) And it was like a whole fiasco getting this one watched. Of course it was. Uh, How was your experience with it? What versions did you watch? I watched the Japanese. um, And then I watched part of the the Viz redub. I just flipped through that because I wanted to see... If I knew and or well, I knew I would know them, but I wanted to see if I would like 
if I'd already interviewed the people that played the like original characters just for this episode. Well, I'm glad you did that because I also want to know what choices they made compared to what the other choices that were made were in the 90s, which I fully support, by the way, everything that happens in this episode. I think it's perfect. <laughs> I would not change anything. Um, so we start the episode out and we see, to me, what feel like the iconic Sailor V frames, which it's like her in three poses with a bright white background, right? She's hot. She's powerful. She's Sailor V. Our hero! Sailor V, the movie. Coming soon to theaters everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna die waiting for Sailor V's movie. I can't think of anything else. I'm gonna have a panic attack. Thank goodness I've got my comics to read till then. Tough life. To me, that always really stuck out as one of the coolest animations from season one who did this episode or character designer for seasons one and two and the first movie i think it showed in this one a lot um because and not just like oh the animation looks nice but there were a lot of really nuanced details that i noticed in the animation this time when i watched it and i thought it was probably one of them yeah the top two or three so we see sailor moon or serena i mean watching this commercial for sailor v in the english dub and the TV is, like, super staticky, and they have English-imposed letters over it. I think that said, like, Sailor V movie or something. Was there... Do you remember, was there TV static in the original at all? Yeah. And then there's no lettering, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it looked like word art, if anyone remember. Like, 1998 um, word document, like, block letters. I thought that was kind of funny. What is the whole setup for this episode in the original it's two two girls that are that work for a production studio for anime and they're supposed to make they're they're both working on the uh, an anime adaptation for sailor v and they're both um one of them is like secretly jealous of them and then uh, well at least to a small degree and then that's exemplified by Nephrite's power and then that's the whole problem <laughs> yeah uh it's pretty it's kind of i think the whole basis is meant to be jealousy but then also i guess like to me it feels like letting your competitive spirit overtake what is healthy because a little yeah. bit of good rivalry and competition does help people get better but when you move it to a certain level then it's like an issue mm -hmm. um and yeah, and that and that's pretty much straightforward what it is. I don't know why, but for some reason, this whole episode is also Gone with the Wind on Sailor Moon. <laughs> and specifically Lori, who has the short dark hair and kind of black rimmed rectangle glasses. I'm really not looking forward to meeting with Mr. Masterson. Why not? Didn't you finish your latest assignment? That's not it. I just don't feel like having my work picked apart. <laughs> Hmm. Mm hmm. Needs work. But I really worked hard on it. Yes, I can see that too, Lori. But you're still making the same mistake here. Her hair should be more messy after a fight scene, and her leg is about a millimeter too wide. Ugh. I want perfection. There's no other way to say it. She's clearly a lesbian. Clearly. <laughs> um, I don't want to assume. But in the Japanese version, is it stated any either way? No. This, I think, is one of those examples of a coded character, honestly. And I'm not saying it like she's a lesbian to be funny. I genuinely believe it was meant to be a lesbian that was not stated. Um, which you see a lot of that stuff in media, in like historical, when we couldn't really be open with it. Um, I don't know that the intention was for her friend cassie in the english one who i, I labeled cute headband girl because i like her headband i don't know if it was the intention that she was supposed to be like the straight girlfriend who has the lesbian friend that's like obsessed with her do you know what i mean or if it was actually they were supposed to be kind of like into each other yeah um but i genuinely feel like there was something supposed to be going on between the two of them do you did you get that vibe at all well, I think maybe that is the case in the original because a, a really cute thing in this episode is their both of their Japanese names are Hiromi and Kazuko, which are the names of the lead character designer of seasons one and two, and then her 
her uh, her husband. That's adorable. Okay, I think so. so <laughs> yeah. I think so then. Um, and I really loved that. And then also, before we get further in, something I noticed was, I think it's interesting, the timing of this episode, how it lands right after a filler episode was done. And I'm... Well, this one is, this one is a filler, too. But it's part of the Nephlite arc, though. Yeah, but none, well, none, none of this stuff happened in the, in the manga. Oh, that's what you mean by filler. To me, uh, I guess I was thinking, like, maybe it was reflecting, like, the animators' attitudes at the time or feeling pressured or something. Oh. <laughs> um, no. Maybe yeah. not, though. Uh, but I also thought that you could tell the people who made this episode put a lot of personality into it. Because if you notice, all of the animators who are not main characters have very specific looks. Did you pick up on that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it looks like they were designed after actual people in a way that most characters are not usually in this show. Yeah, that was probably what was going on. <laughs> I just, I have to imagine that seeing something as specific as, like, the lady who's, like, she's, like, the only female character with a rounded nose we ever see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, seeing something like that and being like, oh, that's me. Like, that must feel cool. No matter how long mm -hmm. it's been, you know? Yeah. Um, do you did you find any trivia about that? Not anything specific about like characters that look like that were based off other animators or people that worked on the show. It was just the husband and the wife named after the characters thing. I'm guessing if they did that, they probably did other things too. Yeah, which reminds me that like I'm sure you've seen Spirited Away, right? Studio mm -hmm. is it Studio Ghibli or Ghibli? I think it's Ghibli. Yeah. Okay. Well, GIF or GIF. But they, in Spirited Away, oh gosh, what were we just talking? I just lost it. It was so important. Oh yeah. So I remember watching like on the DVD, there's these extras and they interviewed Hayao Miyazaki about mm -hmm. creating his things. And he said that one of the reasons why he thinks his stuff kind of touches people's hearts so much is because he models most of his characters after real people down yeah. to like... The very, what like, the mother in Spirited Away, the, if you notice the way she eats, she holds her elbows down. And, like, that was modeled after a specific person he knows. And, like, Chihiro's character is a person he knew. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I think when you draw inspiration so heavily from real life, it really does kind of shine through because it's not being done in a way to mock someone. It's truly, like, I love this person enough to put them in my art. Yeah. And I think when someone does something like that, it has, like, a special something to it and i think we got to see that in this which is not always the case in sailor moon i mean we've had a few animated epi like episodes in season one animation wise that were kind of clunky yeah honestly. definitely um what constellation oh wait hold on i'm skipping ahead <laughs> sorry so Lori is the southern bell and then cassie is the cute headband girl and when they're walking after we see them the first time they drop some papers who finds the stuff they drop Ami. Yeah. So Amy is kind of like on her own. She catches wind that something's up with these two. And then she sees Nephlight in his car. And this is that, it's another one of those moments that sticks out to me from season one. She looks and she looks like terrified kind of. And there's this bright white background and it's it, it goes from fast to slow-mo. Do you know what part I'm talking about? Yeah. I've got so much homework. I'll return this tomorrow. <gasps> that guy looks familiar. That was Nephlight. Um, and that was another moment where I was like, oh, I really think this is one of the better animators mm -hmm. from this, this show. Because that was so well done. And, and the reason... When I say something is well done, like, in that kind of a moment, it's, like, they animate the tiny, like, her hair moving in yeah. a slow... Do you know what I'm saying? It's, like, the really small details that make it so good. Yeah. Um, let's see. What constellation does Nephlight use this, this week? That's Gemini, isn't it? The movement of the stars rules everything. Powers of the Negaverse guide me to my next victim. It is. Um, we'll get more into that later. Find someone with untapped resources so I can harness a vast amount of energy and release the Gemini Warriors. This time, 
I'll beat the Sailor Scouts at their own game. When we see Lori later, she's working on her art again and getting frustrated. What was her frustration in, in the versions you watched? It's because she flips through her her friends, what the the Genga that she drew for Sailor V, and it looks better, and in her opinion, it looks like way better than her own. She does eventually end up doing that. I was talking about when she's actually drawing her own, she says, oh, What am I doing? I finally get the hair thing right, then I miss up on the stupid bow. I'm never gonna get it. Oh, I'm never gonna make the deadline. Oh, I wonder how far Cassie got on this today. Was she specific like that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, I thought that that is something that I would, when you're a creative person, it kind of can be like that on certain days where you're like, even with this show, it's like, I'll get my audio quality figured out and then I'll go to edit it. And it's like, for some reason, when I go to do the intro, it sounds whack. Or You know what I mean? It's just like, there's always this little give and take. Um, and I think that's a creativity mm-hmm. thing that like we all kind of go through. Yeah. What is the label they give these pencils that are kind of like the focus of the issue here? Well, they're, they're supposed to be for like pro animators. Yeah, they just call them professional animator pencils. I imagine if we're drawing parallels to like a real life brand, and this is not like a plug, but it would be something if you know art, like probably whatever's above Prismacolor, because Prismacolor is kind of like the expensive brand that you can get when you're just a, like a person art. I don't know how to say it, like a regular old artist, but I don't know what they would use that's better than that for like an animation studio, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I would imagine they were probably really expensive. And did you notice the cases that Cassie puts them in? Yeah, they're tied with a, like a pink ribbon or something. Yeah, did they remind you of anything? No. Oh, they reminded me a little bit of Dream Mirrors from Super S. Oh, yeah. It's like, I think yeah, it's the no, way they that. do the bows, maybe. And yeah. the fact that it was the same pink. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought they were super cute. And so they split these pencils in half and they're supposed to share them. Do they make a promise to each other about this in, in those versions? Yeah. What's the promise they make? It's that they're both going to become animators for a studio by the time next year or like by when they graduate yeah or something like that oh i like yeah. that that's better than the one they did in english in english they were just like i'm never gonna use these pencils unless you say i can which i always <laughs> was like why did you get them yeah <laughs> like that's so dumb um but it kind of feeds into like what the english version does with their whole story i guess yeah because uh, they say oh okay so yeah they say they're not going to use them without each other's permission then we get to mercury just Taking on Neflite alone, jumping on a car, that's that, I think people meme that sometimes, don't they? <laughs> mm-hmm. Queen Beryl should be quite satisfied with that girl's energy. Neflite, huh? explain yourself. Why are you here? Whatever it is, you're not getting away with it. Really? We'll see about that. <gasps> <gasps> know which one of you sailor scouts is more pathetic you are that wimpy little friend of yours sailor moon but i thought that was super ballsy of her because i was like girl yeah but that's kind of she does that a lot she does that with tuxedo mask when he's bad too yeah um so i kind of that's one of the things i love about her and then when he's leaving because they don't actually fight we get to see one of these moments where i think i think i was katie that mentioned it but they talked about how like Sometimes the beats are weird because the way the mouths are moving in Japanese, you have to pause in the middle of a sentence. Yeah. Um, And we kind of saw an example of that here where it's like, Mercury says, We're going to get you! Next time! (laughs) (laughs) And it's kind of funny, but also... I realized that those strange beats add a certain rhythm to the show that gives it like a comforting uniqueness and Mm -hmm. i kind of like it honestly um yeah because it makes it feel almost like an acting choice even though it's not i think it accidentally works in their favor Mm -hmm. what is what happens after that it doesn't cut to the next day or or does it or does it go to um him giving 
going into the studio alone. I don't remember. Before that, we see them talking outside, and it's like when they meet Ray in the pink overalls. And so, oh, right, uh, yeah. Yeah. So what sub... Did they reference the subject? Because they're talking when they, that whole scene starts, and Amy's like, oh, you failed this test or whatever. Do they talk about that? No, that that's what they're talking about in Japanese in the Viz redub is you mean like when she's when when it cuts to Usagi and them in the courtyard yeah yeah no they're talking about the situation that happened and Usagi wants to go and visit the studio so she can get like a cell from the studio of Sailor V <laughs> yeah they don't mention cells at all I don't think <laughs> I didn't think so yeah they're like <laughs> they're like so you bombed on your spelling test mm-hmm it was hard. Well, I'll help you study for the next one. Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. Where have you been? Uh, it was Melvin's fault. He wouldn't stop yakking. So why didn't you call me on the communicator? Miss Haruna was yelling too loudly. You wouldn't have heard us. <laughs> don't tell her. Hmm? Ray, did you cut class to go home to change? <sighs> no, it just so happens I took a change of clothes this morning. My uniform's in yes, the bag. and I'm a purple cockatoo. What are we waiting for? Let's jet. <gasps> What subject? Or no, Amy is like, you bombed a spelling test. It's all right. I thought spelling. I'm like, this girl's 14, not seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I just, I thought that the choice of spelling was such an odd subject. And, and something told me, I was like, I don't think they were talking about that. No. In the Japanese. Um, they, all, they even address Ray's clothes. Because I think they thought she looked funny or something. So they were like making fun of her. And they're, did you go home and change? What's all this about? Were they picking on her clothes in the Japanese one? No. Yeah, I thought so. I personally think she looks adorable. I support her pink overalls. Yeah. What is Ray's motivation for wanting to go to the animation studio in the, in your versions? Uh, well, her bag rips, and it's a bunch of Japanese style autograph boards, and then she wants, yeah, they, it's she wants to get like autographs from the animators that are working on the show. Does she want them for herself? Yeah. Okay, in the English one, she wants to sell them. Oh, yeah. They make her so much more, like, conniving, I feel like. Yeah. Or at least a little bit, um, which is, you know, I think they were going with the whole Mars God of War thing on that. Oh, yeah. Angle. Um, oh, I love this moment between Nephlight and Zoysite. They're having a little tiff or whatever, and, and Zoysite's, like, being a bitch. And then... <laughs> Nephlight just goes, oh, you've been studying human sarcasm. And Zoysite's <laughs> like, it's required. <laughs> I love that so much. I love yeah. the idea of evil aliens studying humans and being like, we have to learn how to be like the assholes. Um, yeah. Not that sarcasm makes you an asshole. There's a time and a place. But uh, I just, I thought that little exchange was kind of cute between the two of them. What was mm -hmm. their... It, it seemed, I know it's meant to be serious, but it, it came off as funny to me. What was the vibe with them in, in your version? Uh, pretty much throughout in the Japanese between Zoosite and Nefra, it's just, it's kind of the same thing every time. It just, like, talking about, you know, failing the mission and, like, Nephrite saying, oh, I, you know, it's going to happen this time. And then Zoosite knowing that it's not and just being snide about it. It's pretty similar. I think in the dub they gave there a little bit more playfulness to it. Yeah. Either that or it's just the way the voice acting is done that makes it a little more lighthearted. But yeah. I kind of really enjoy their dynamic. Um, it, It's a little bit like... It reminds me of Team Rocket's relationship with Giovanni a little for some mm, reason. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, okay, what does evil Lori, who by the way is a character she's like a villain from are you afraid of the dark <laughs> when she turns evil in this version because it's like she still has the southern accent but it's much higher pitched and she's speaking a lot faster and then she does this giggle that sounds like if you press like a creepy giggle button on a like a soundboard or something Lori? You've done all of those this morning already? No, that's only half Mr. Matson has the others and Cassie. Uh-huh. I don't want anybody bothering me. Including you. Mm, Lori, okay. wait a minute. Wait! Something's wrong. <laughs> I'm the best student in this whole sorry school. And with this pencil, I'll blow Cassie right out of the competition. 
Um, and then she calls the girls dig bats, <laughs> which I loved. I was like, these these insults are so great. I, can we just stop being rude to each other with real like curse words and bring this stuff back? Like mm-hmm. dig bats. How was she? How was her transformation from like good animator to bad in the Japanese? Also, what was her Japanese name again? Uh, Hiromi. Hiromi. So how how was her transformation? Mm, uh, I I mean it was more serious, obviously. Like it was just cutting herself off from everybody else and being genuinely pissed off that uh, Usagi and Rei and Ami showed up. She was really mad in in this one too, and and she did a good job of coming off as like unhinged and. It's if anybody has seen the I don't know if it's the most I think it's the second to most recent American Horror Story. It's the one that was a double feature. Do you know what I mean? Have you oh, seen that yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. It, she reminded me of when the creative people took the pills mm. in to like and that didn't didn't work for them. Yeah. So they would like go wild. It was very that to me. And I kind of love how creepy it was. And I think the southern accent, as funny as it was, made the creepy part better. <laughs> okay. Too. I don't know why. It just did for me. She's gotten mean and real competitive. You two keep your mouth shut, you hear me? This isn't a playground. It's a workplace. And we don't need dingbats like you hmm. disturbing us. That's enough, Lori. You're being rude. We invited them to look around and see how we do things. Do they have to squeal like two stock pigs? I can't concentrate with all that noise. Well, aren't we the prima donna all of a sudden? What's the cursed item? It's the, the pencil, like the last pencil that she has from the ones that they bought. Oh, and then what does Lori try to do because of it when she's on the phone with her boss? It's exactly what I was looking for. When we do the sequel, you're my lead artist. There won't be a sequel. Of course there will be. Not anymore. Sailor V's finished. She'll be destroyed. Evil will prevail. You're a wacko. Put Cassie <gasps> on the line right now. Then we'll create a whole new series about the glory of the Dark Force. Yeah, she says she's going to get destroyed, which I think they didn't. They probably couldn't say kill. Yeah. Um... But I thought that was funny, too, because it's like, aren't you, like, out of school and you're, like, 15? <laughs> at least that's the way. She's supposedly at an animator school in the English one. Is she supposed to be an adult in the other one? Yeah, they're not. I did read that, that in, in the dub, that in the first dub, that they're students for, like, an animation school. But no, like, in obviously in the Japanese dub and the Viz dub, they're, they, like, work at an actual anime production studio. You really couldn't tell the <laughs> difference. Like, I, I I mean, I guess, like, the short hair glasses, girl, it just seemed like an odd choice for a kid. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what a weird way to dress. And then also, I remember watching this when I was younger and being like, how are these children doing this? Yeah. Like, animating a feature film. Because <laughs> I wanted to. Not that I can draw, but, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, yeah, so they curse the this animation pencil. And we get to see another three-way transformation with moon mercury and mars i love the way they did this one um they had a cool little thing where like you see all three of their eyes at the end right before that goes into the sequence sailors are you ready yes Uh, how do you feel about yeah that that was that was cool but i mean the whole well it was even more interesting how caster and pollux the twin monsters come out that was really well animated i agree i thought that was really really cool and then also hearing like um monsters using scout abilities was interesting to me yeah do they say the ability names in the japanese yeah yeah, because it's like, oh, that's weird. It's not coming from Katie or, you know, or whoever. Yep. Um, so I thought that was kind of an interesting thing we get to see. Mars, fire, ignite! Mercury, bubble, blast! How do they defeat them? Because they're really strong. This is like a, actually a tough battle for once. Oh, well, I mean, and maybe it's like... I wonder. I wonder if it's edited edited to go on longer in the English version. Maybe it's not, but I mean, they kind of end up. They the, the two monsters like f- are fighting with each other, and then they 
split up their yeah i guess that is what happens the reason i get i think they're they like go on about how they're so strong in the english one and then at the end Neflite's like they were supposed to be unbeatable so i yeah. guess maybe they're it's like a symptom of them telling me they're strong not them actually being strong you know yeah but yeah we get the three part attack for this one which we i thought was in the nightmare before dreamland episode that wasn't this is the one i was talking about where oh okay. we get the moon tiara magic mercury bubbles blast and mars fire ignite all together yeah and i love that attack it's called stardust stream hit in the rpg it's probably the strongest combined attack. I mean, they all end up at 9999 eventually, so whatever. But it's one of the stronger ones. Yeah. And it uses the same three scouts, and it looks really cool. And then, after the battle's over, what happens? Oh, after oh, after they defeat them. Um, they, they come out of it, and then... Oh, you mean like how the... Are you talking about like the very end of the episode, like what leads up to it? With the two, yeah, with the animators, like what's their last scene like? Oh yeah, they have the the they have the pinky promise thing. At least in this one, they say we promise we're gonna keep up with one another. Like we're gonna keep pushing each other to be better in a positive way. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, it was a cute little ending. The pinky promise thing, actually, they might have cut that out. I need to go back and look now. Yeah, I, I don't remember them doing that. It's the last image on the screen. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's like both their hands are ethereal, like against... Nope. Okay. <laughs> they cut it out. Oh, that's not surprising. It goes from them chatting to the sailor says. Okay. Like, and then it does a little, like, closeout thing when we're on Serena's yeah. face still. Huh. Yeah. See, they were totally gay. <laughs> they, every time they do like a slow mo hand thing, that means like gay. That's how they show <laughs> Uranus and Neptune. You know right. what I mean? They yeah. were always doing that thing where like we don't have sex, but we just lightly touch palms. Like, like <laughs> that was their whole deal. Which I mean, whatever, it's safer. Do that. Yeah. Um, okay, I love this episode. Give me your overall thoughts. Yeah, I do too. It's probably one of my favorite ones from the earlier seasons overall. What makes you love this one? Probably, honestly, the the fact that it's about producing anime and, like, the cells and the production, the whole, like, how everything is made. And that's, it's fun. It's always fun to see that within an, an anime because because uh, obviously that's not the case anymore. And it's, I think even overall, it's not really, like, parodied or referenced very much in anime. It is kind of right on your niche of the mm -hmm. production artwork thing and then you're right that's it's I, I i like i never noticed that because i always liked this episode for the goofy voice acting in it but you're right it kind of gives us this unique little sailor moon lens view of yep. maybe what an animation room was like in the 90s for people and the fact that they were using these colored pencils that were probably very expensive and they had to conserve Maybe their resources until they got their next paycheck. You know what I mean? Like, things that we just probably wouldn't even consider the further into the future we go. Yeah, that's how animation studios in Japan looked then. They were, like, really tiny, kind of like cubicles, but even smaller. And everybody had their own, like, multiple spots at, at every desk. Yeah, and, and, and I can imagine that while it was probably a dream job for a lot of people, it was a lot of really hard work. And doing that kind of hours on your hands when you're doing anything that involves like repetition movement, I'm sure a lot of people had issues from that after, you know, but I don't know if you got to work, if you're like, yeah, but I also helped create this iconic show. I mean, mm -hmm. would you care? I don't know. Well, I mean, that's, I've mentioned it before. I don't know if you remember, I think I haven't mentioned, I haven't talked about it in a while, but. That was one of the reasons why so many people left after Super S was because of how much tension there was and mistreatment by Toei from towards the staff. Yeah, you're right. It was it was the end of season four, right? Yep, that's that's when Ito left. That's when a lot of the a lot of the big name people left. It's it's such a shame because I I haven't watched more of Sailor Stars since we talked about it because I just got busy with other stuff. But I've, I have this issue with Sailor Stars where I'm like, 
I love the concept of it so much and I love a lot of aspects of it, but it is kind of like I do notice the decline, you know. Yeah. In animation. It it just feels like slightly off all the way through. Yeah. I mean the the nicest the nicest episodes of Stars, like they still look amazing, but overall, yeah, yeah I I think it's like as a as a whole, it doesn't look as good as like three and four, obviously. No, which it's such a it's such a bummer that it had to go down like that. But hey, I still appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. Um, let's rate the episode. So you go first this week. I'd probably give it a four and a half. Yeah, I'm gonna give it five stars. This is my first okay. first five star episode because it's one that I have to say has st- I forget like a lot of the episodes of Sailor Moon. After the first time I saw this, any time I am even slightly reminded that it exists, I can, like, pull it up <laughs> clearly in my brain. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Um, and it just, it's, like, so stuck in my head that I think that, plus everything that's wrapped up together with it, with Lori's voice and everything, it's gotta be five stars. If you're gonna mm-hmm. only watch one episode in the old dub from the first season, in my opinion, it should be this one. Okay. Um, because, I mean, honestly, I, I really don't like what they did with the finale. It's, like, the one issue I have with their dub. And mm-hmm. I can't think of any others that stand out to me as much as this one from season one. Can you? In terms of the original dub, I think uh, the one where Jupiter debuts is pretty good. And it's a very good episode, too. Uh, I mean, I remember yeah. all of those as well. That's fair. Cause, but, but to me, they get extra clout because they're, like a scout arriving so it's almost like, yeah. not fair to compare it if we're okay and the one yeah go ahead well the one i was about, i was about to say too that the one of um the the skiing episode stands out too i think i like that one and that stands out to me in a way that it was like hard for me to get a hold of as a kid so i didn't see it as much so every oh, time okay. i did see it it was kind of like a special thing you know what i mean yeah um so that has like extra clout for me too uh okay so five stars from me four and a half from Chris, and we should talk about the Sailor Says. When Laura used Niflite's pencil to draw better, she was cutting corners, using something that wasn't hers to further her career. So she got a lot of praise and admiration. Deep inside, she knew it wasn't really her doing those beautiful drawings. Doing something well takes time and patience and hard work. But for all that effort, you have pride of knowing you did it all on your own. Don't be afraid of a little hard work. Most of all, don't cheat. Sailor Moon says you won't be sorry. She should talk. And then Luna at the end goes, she should talk, because, like, Serena's a ditz, right? Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? That's a good one. That's, like, a, you know, stuff that is real and not corny. Yeah, um, I think sometimes the Sailor says can be a little bit, like, derpy. Yeah. But this one is legit advice that they want you to get as soon as you can because your life will genuinely be better for it. Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) the sooner you understand that you can do anything you want to do with, you know, within reasons of reality, but you do have to put in the work to do it. But the sooner you get there, the more you can accomplish. Yeah. Um, And you kind of just have to get over the fact that working is boring. Yeah. Like, sorry. Like, it's just like, you wouldn't be at 280 some interviews if you didn't push through (laughs) the days where you're like, I don't feel so good today. I don't, maybe don't want to do this. It's getting to, maybe you have some kind of imposter syndrome. That's really common. Yeah. Do you know what that means? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. um, So like, without the commitment to keep going you can have all the talent in the world but mm-hmm. you're not really gonna end up anywhere um and and listen i see that with students a lot where i have some students who work probably 20 times harder than another student who is naturally more talented and they will end up in the end going farther even though they do have to work harder for it but if the student who was more talented put in that same level of work they would be like astronomical. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. on television levels. Um, and listen, I can say that because I was one of those students with natural talent who definitely didn't practice enough. <laughs> like <laughs> I totally should have practiced more. I won competitions and stuff, but like there were kids who put in three, four hours a day and it shows, you know, like there's a difference. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I actually really like the sailor says. 
that's it for this episode. Do you want to add anything about it? Well, it's sort of related to what you were just saying. If you wanted to talk about the, because early, earlier this week I sent you that the that clip of uh, Fiori's redub actor, and then like what you said about. Oh, it. that was so funny. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What's his name again? Uh, ben Diskin. That's on your YouTube now, right? Yeah, I, I interviewed him. It's actually exactly a year ago, like tomorrow or uh, Wednesday. Oh, that's cute. He was Fiore and who else? In the redub, he, yeah, he was Fiore and then he was uh, Umino or Melvin. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, uh, I love Melvin. <laughs> He's such a good... His reaction to you liking Fiore made me laugh so much. Um, I'm... Do you mind if I put it in the end here for people yeah. to see just like <laughs> yeah. that little bit? Uh, it's so cute because I'm going to stick his interview in closer to when we do the, the Sailor Moon yeah. R movie probably. Yeah, yeah, it was so adorable. And I, I love the way what he said about like when he went into that audition, the reason he, I don't know if he said this is the reason why, but it was the one where he was like, I don't care. I'm just going to do whatever. And then they liked it the most. You know what I mean? Yeah. And And I think we talked about that a little where it's like, if you pay close attention to those people who you like that are successful, listen to what they say when they talk about, like, people will ask them, like, what makes you do this or what sets you apart? And a lot of them will say, the second I stopped caring so much is when the world opened up for me. Yeah. And that sounds counterintuitive. And trust me, I know it does. But I think you get what I mean. Do you? Oh. Can you explain that at all? Yeah. It's like, if you get too in your head about something and anxious about wanting to do a good job or... A performance or any anything really then you usually are way too focused on that instead of actually doing what you're supposed to do and then mm -hmm. it's not going to end up as well in a lot of cases yeah and it's a skill that i for a long time i was trying to figure out how to word that concept and then it's so funny that he was talking about that because in my last recital with my students i finally got it down but <laughs> but i basically told them i was like listen we have been working super, super hard for the last, like, four months. Yeah. You guys have put in all of the work. Now you get to not care what happens today. That is yeah. the benefit. We're going to go on stage. You're going to do your song. And listen, everybody who's here is just thrilled that you are have the guts to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they get up on stage and they're like, it goes ten times better than them trying to put on a perfect show or thinking that, like, this is the most important thing in the world. Because it's like, no, the important part was actually doing the work. You did that already. Yeah. Now you get to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, so, I yeah, it's such a great message. And for anyone out there who is, like, wanting to pursue something in the creative field, I think that's some of the best advice you can follow. Prepare, prepare, prepare up until, like, maybe the day before. Mm -hmm. And then just let all of it be what it is. And if you don't get something, it wasn't for you. People say that a lot, but it really is true. And you'll understand why later. Right. I promise you will. Because because you're going to hit a point where you're like, oh my God, if I got that thing, then this wouldn't have happened and I never would have been here. Yeah. You know? And and, and so, yeah, that would that's a great... I think that's a great way to close out this episode. Um, was there anything else you want to add about it? No, nope, I think that's everything for my end, too. Let me see if there's any trivia here. Hmm, this is sort of interesting, I guess. This is all taken from the Sailor Moon dub fandom.com. It is the last time the Negaverse is shown trying to gather energy. I don't know if that's true, but that's what this says. So we'll have to... Does that sound true to you? Well, yeah, because I think everything... After this episode, everything else is about, you know, the crystals. I guess you're right. But I... Wait, do the rainbow crystals start while Nephlite is still there? Yeah, I think I think so. Huh. I find that... Ooh, I find that very interesting. Because usually they're a little more clean in how they, like, break up things. You know what I mean? I would have expected that to just belong to Zoisite for some reason. Um... Yeah, I forgot all about that. Okay, I guess that's true. This is the last time they're just after energy. Um, it's also the first time the Sailor Scouts show their transformations simultaneously. If you're only following the old English dub, we saw that same thing last week in episode 20 um, of the other one. And then this is also the second time Moon and Mars use their attacks combined. But then they say only Mercury Bubbles is used to. That buys that trivia. That's not trivia. 
Get out of my face. Um, and then this is episode 21 in Japan. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so that's it. That's all I got on this one. Uh, what do you have planned for this week outside of work? Anything cool? Uh, not really. It's supposed to... Uh, tomorrow through Thursday, it's supposed to be a ton of snow here again. So I'm just going to be probably totally stuck inside until that's over. <laughs> As someone who still finds that magical, when is the last time you built a snowman? Not for a really long time. When was the last time it was fun <laughs> uh, to go out in the snow? For me, like, not since probably, like, I don't know, middle school or something. It is. I mean, I don't get a lot of cold, and I always say I want snow, and then the second it hits, like, 40 here, I'm like, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, good luck with that, you know, staying warm and everything. Uh, okay, and I'd also, do, this isn't related to what you were asking, but um, I'll probably have it in the mail by the end of this week or early next week. I have a really nice cut of a uh, Seiya coming in from... Ooh, like, is it like production artwork, you mean? Yeah, it's a sketch set. That's exciting. From what episode? It's 193, which is the one where they're, the scouts are in the maid cafe. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah. I might go back and watch it this week so I can see what that frame is when you get it. Mm -hmm. um, where Do you post these online when you get them? I know you do the rubber slug, but do you put them on your socials? Not on my main account. Like, I have an anime Instagram, but I also post them on, like, Facebook, and I post them on... If I get... if I ever, Anytime I get anything from Sailor Moon, I post it, like, in the Sailor Moon subreddit. Too. Oh, so people can check it out there. I'll probably, if you want, I'll post it on the Moonstar Facebook page too. Oh yeah. And then I might, if you want, I'll actually I should do this. I'll link your rubber slug on the Moonstar website. We have a website. I should tell people <laughs> MoonstarPod.com. Um, <laughs> people want to go there and see this stuff. Uh, it's still sort of under construction, but if yeah, I'll have a link to your your gallery there. Okay. Cool. So people can check it out. Um, and then I can, your YouTube and stuff is already linked on there too. And yeah, so I saw all that. my socials. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I guess that's it. All right. I'll see you next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. 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 Will you check out the school? But Amy, you know you shouldn't have challenged Niflight by yourself. Yes, it was stupid. Wimpy? Oh. He called me Wimpy? How dare he call well, me that? No. It does have a certain ring of truth to it. Don't wavester! I dare him to show his simpy face around me. Oh, I'm gonna blast him straight into the Chirana's face! Oh. This from a girl who cries during pillow fights. Oh, yes, I forgot to tell you, it's at the animation school. Huh? That's where they're doing the work for the Sailor V movie. Oh, how cool! Maybe she'll be there. I'll get her autograph. No. <laughs> All right, I had to just throw that last clip in there for you guys at the end. It's one of my favorite moments from this episode that, for whatever reason, I just forgot to include it in my notes to discuss it with Chris. I think I was probably writing something else about the episode when this part happened, but I just love the way Serena gets so indignant about what, <laughs> what Nephilim says about her. Um, I don't know, I thought it's really cute and it's the type of energy that I enjoy about her character a lot, so I wanted to put that in there at the end for all of you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Moonstar. That was episode titled An Animated Mess in English. I'm not going to repeat the Japanese one because I don't want to look it up again. But you guys heard it in the beginning, so, and it's online. I hope you guys had fun with this one, really, um, because it was, it's, as you heard, it's one of my, if not my favorite episode from season one the way at least Deke's version of it which might be shocking to some people I don't know when I watch stuff like this it's very rare for me to choose any main character as and when I say main character like I mean protagonist like the main one so it's rare for me that Serena is one of my favorite characters but it is kind of typical for me that like I won't really choose a favorite of something that's like a mainline part of the show. Does that make sense? Like, I, I if we're talking favorites, I'm re I'm probably pulling from a pool of what would be considered either filler episodes or just not 
maybe not part of the main story arc most times. That's the way I tend to lean. But like I said, in Sailor Moon, I love the main character a lot. Uh, especially more as the older I get, the more I appreciate her. Yeah. Well, how do you guys? Who? I, I would. I would love some people to comment that used to watch the show as kids and start either watching it with us again now or have just seen it as an adult and, and I'm curious how your favorites maybe changed and if they did why and what what ways you relate to the show differently as an adult compared to how you did as a kid okay now I have to actually do the plugs because this part's not this episode's long enough uh, if you want to find more of Chris, you can find him on Instagram and YouTube at Chris Mayek, C-H-R-I-S-M-A-Y-E-K. You can find more of Alex, that's me, on Instagram and Twitter and, I guess, TikTok. I don't use it much, but I do throw some random stuff on there. And that's Alex Summers, S-F-E, for now. That might be changing. And... You can follow Moonstar on Facebook, but definitely go bookmark moonstarpod.com. And it's not just going to be a website that's featuring only our podcast. For right now it does, but it's also going to be my version of kind of an amalgamation of the websites I grew up obsessed with as a Mooney in the 90s, which would be princessserenity.net, sailorvgame.org, uh, stuff like that. So you can expect to see all kinds of cool free content for you guys to get into, like Sailor Moon fan-made video games, the 90s Mooney history section, where we're gonna have things like that. Uh, places where you can find, like, actual tutorials people wrote and posted for how to do Sailor Moon's hairstyle from then. And you can see the way, and you'll be able to tell it was from then because of the way it's typed, you know, and the photos. Uh, and we're going to have some featured fan art and things like, and just a whole bunch of cool stuff. So bookmark moonstarpod.com. And then this last plug is sort of intended as a, ca not really a casting call, but like we're sort of looking for talent. I don't know. Go to VintageAnimeVideo.com and take a look around there. We're starting something called the Vintage Anime Video Network, which is going to be a network of shows similar to Moonstar, a Sailor Moon podcast, that all kind of support each other. We maybe do ad spots on each other's shows, guest spots when, we, when somebody needs a guest, things like that. And they're all in a similar vein. If you feel like you would be able to carry... A show like that, meaning you're sort of an expert on whatever the specific anime might be. I need to hear from you. I want to. I want to know about it. Write to me in an email or fill out the form on vintageanimevideo.com, and just tell me what the anime is, what your experience with it is. Uh, share any past fan projects that you may have started. They don't have to be completed. I understand how that kind of stuff goes. But just anything that shows what your level of passion is for that subject. And if everything works out, then you might be doing a show like this pretty soon. The perks of doing it with us as to just trying to do it on your own is I'm going to actually do one-on-one -on -one guidance with you. We can do Zoom calls or whatever or just chat online, whatever works for you. But I'm going to guide you through some of the things that feel a little overwhelming in the beginning so that way you can just blast through those walls and, and get to the creating part you know and you you know i'll be there to answer questions and stuff for you plus i'll make the website for you and it will be featured on the vintage anime video website and all of that so yeah there's a lot of perks to to doing it with us as opposed to just trying to do it on your own and if you're interested uh, doesn't need, I don't even need to be on the show as a, as you know the the person you're teaching about it. Although, I'll be honest, if someone writes in about Cowboy Bebop, I'm that is I'm reserving a spot <laughs> on that show because it's one that I loved as a kid, but then I just haven't dug into it properly ever. I've never seen the whole thing. I've never had it you know available to me like that. And I would love to connect with an, someone who's an expert on it and just go from beginning to end how we're doing here and learn everything there is to know about it. 
So that, that's what I'm looking for, but anything similar, whatever you want, write us a, a note about it. And let's see, is there anything else we want to plug? Follow Moonstar, no, I think that's it. Moonstar, a Sailor Moon podcast, and all affiliated shows are created for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. All audio clips and sound effects used in the creation of this show belong expressly to the license and copyright holders. Ready to put these sailor brats in their place? Oh yeah, I can hardly wait! Gemini! Right. 